Good morning, everyone. It's that time again. It's the Sabbath day, and we're being blessed by God in remembering who he is and what he's done for us. We especially remember his love for us by sending his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. There have always been many names and descriptions associated with Jesus Christ, and rightly so. As foretold in Isaiah, he would be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Disciples would call him Rabbi, Teacher, and Lord. In our credo confession, we acknowledge that he is both true man and true God. All of these are right and proper. Yet, amid the many names and descriptions found in Scripture and the confessions, we focus today on the fact that Jesus is both prophet and Savior. The prophet Moses pointed to the greater prophet, Jesus, the fulfillment of prophecies as the saving word made flesh, who came as our Savior. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we do come before you today and ask that you would bless us with the time that we have and spend with you in worship. We're still in this season called Epiphany, and the word Epiphany means a showing, a manifestation, being made public. And it's all about your son, Jesus, being manifested, being shown. And dear Father, this morning, especially as we hear your word in the words of the gospel, he is shown through performing a miracle. Help our worship, dear God, to be worship that is filled with your grace, with your mercy, and with your truth. Increase our faith in you through Jesus. In his name we pray. Amen. We begin our worship with um, the order of Matins found on page 219 in our hymnals. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. Make haste, O God, to deliver me. Make haste to help me, O Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Blessed be God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Oh, come, let us worship him. We join together in singing hymn number 904, Blessed Jesus at your word, stanzas one and two. Blessed Jesus, at your word, we are gathered all to hear you. Let our hearts and souls be stirred now to seek and love and fear you. By your teaching, sweet and holy, drawn from earth to i 
we join together in a time of confession, confessing our sins, and are blessed in receiving God's forgiveness. Blessed is the one whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Blessed, Blessed is the man, man against, against whom, whom the Lord, Lord counts, counts no iniquity, iniquity, and in, in whose, whose spirit, spirit there, there is, is no, no deceit. deceit. As Moses speaks to the people through God, we confess those times we do not listen to your words and close our hearts to you. Forgive, Forgive us, us, Lord. As Paul warns, we confess those times when our freedom in Christ causes one who is weak in faith to stumble. Forgive, Forgive us, us, Lord. As Jesus, the long-awaited prophet and savior, taught with and showed his authority and power, we confess those times when we allow the forces of evil to make us forget the deliverance and love of God we have in Christ. Forgive, Forgive us, us, Lord. Lord. With David, the psalmist, we humbly come before the Lord. I acknowledge my sin to you, and I did not cover my iniquity. I said, I, said, I, will, I will confess, confess my, my transgressions, transgressions to the Lord, Lord and, and you, you forgave the iniquity of my, of my sin. sin. Therefore, let everyone who is godly offer prayer to you at a time when you may be found. Surely in the rush of great waters, they shall not reach him. You are a hiding place for me. You preserve me from trouble. You surround me with shouts of deliverance. We sing stanza three of hymn number 904. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, has had mercy upon us and given his only Son to die for us and for his sake forgives us all our sins. As a servant of Christ and by his authority, it is therefore my privilege to forgive you of all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. To those who believe in his name, he gives the power to become the children of God and has promised them his Holy Spirit. May the Lord, who has begun this good work in us, bring it to completion in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Many are the sorrows of the wicked, but steadfast, but steadfast love, love surrounds, surrounds the, the one who, who trusts in, in the Lord. Lord. We join together in singing stanza four of hymn num number 904. Father, Son, and Spirit, Lord, praise to you. found in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 18, verses 15 through 20. This also serves as this morning's sermon text. The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among you, from your brothers, 
It is to him you shall listen, just as you desired of the Lord your God at Horeb on the day of the assembly, when you said, Let me not hear again the voice of the Lord my God, or see this great fire any more, lest I die. And the Lord said to me, They are right in what they have spoken. I will raise up for them a prophet like you from among their brothers, and I will put my words in his mouth. And he shall speak to them all that I command him. And whoever will not listen to my words that he shall speak in my name, I myself will require it of him. But the prophet who presumes to speak a word in my name that I have not commanded him to speak, or who speaks in the name of other gods, that same prophet shall die. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be be to to God. Our epistle reading is recorded in St. Paul's words to the Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 8, verses 1 through 13. Now, concerning, concerning food offered to idols, we know that all of us possess knowledge. This knowledge puffs up, like, but love builds up. If anyone imagines that he knows something, he does not yet know as he ought to know. But if anyone loves God, he is known by God. Therefore, as to the eating of food offered to idols, we know that an idol has no real existence and that there is no God but one. For although there may be so-called gods in heaven or on earth, as indeed there are many gods and many lords, yet for us there is one God, the Father, from whom are all things, and for whom we exist, and one Lord Jesus Christ, through whom are all things, and through whom we exist. However, not all possess this knowledge, but some, through former association with idols, eat food as really offered to an idol, and their conscience, being weak, is defiled. Food will not commend us to God. We are no worse off if we do not eat, and no better off if we do. But take care that this right of yours does not somehow become a stumbling block to the weak. For if anyone sees you who have knowledge eating in an idol's temple, will he not be encouraged, if his conscience is weak, to eat food offered to idols? And so by your knowledge, this weak person is destroyed, the brother for for whom Christ died. Thus, sinning against your brothers and wounding their conscience, when it is weak, you sin against Christ. Therefore, if food makes my brother stumble, I will never eat meat, lest I make my brother stumble. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be be to to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the first chapter, verses 21 through 28. Glory to you, you, O Lord. Lord. And they went into Capernaum. And immediately on the Sabbath, he, that is Jesus, entered the synagogue and was teaching. And they were astonished at his teaching. For he taught them as one who had authority, and not as the scribes. And immediately there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be silent and come out of him. And the unclean spirit, convulsing him and crying out with a loud voice, came out of him. And they were all amazed, so that they questioned among themselves, saying, What is this? A new teaching with authority? He commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. And at once his fame spread everywhere throughout all the surrounding region of Galilee. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, you, O Christ. Christ. 
We sing our next hymn, hymn number 842, Son of God, Eternal Savior. Thank you, dear Heavenly Father, for blessing us with your word, and especially with all of the many prophets of the Old Testament. We thank you primarily because not only how you chose to use them historically at that time, but especially for them to be given by you the prophetic word, and especially the prophet Moses of knowing that there was a greater prophet to come and how they prophesied about his coming. And that's exactly what the prophet Moses did. And he was pointing to your son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, as the greater prophet, the greatest prophet of all. Bless us, dear God, in hearing the message as it is preached to us this morning that it would touch our hearts and our souls, helping us, dear Father, to be truly blessed. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. There's a a story, a cute story, that's shared by a pastor that I'd like to share with you now, and so I just read his account of, 
of what happened between him and his four-year-old son. Daddy, a little hand touched my forehead. I opened my eyes, which were fixed on the clock by my bed. It was 3.44 a.m. Yeah, Jonathan? I need to go to the bathroom. Thanks, son, for the breaking news bulletin. Jonathan was, was four at the time. Our home had just been remodeled, and one bathroom was now at the end of a long hallway. When you're four years old and wandering around the house in the middle of the night, a new hallway looks like five miles long, with multiple side rooms where giants are are waiting to jump out and eat little kids for late-night snacks. Daddy... Yeah, Jonathan, please come with me. Thanks for the invitation, son, but believe it or not, I'm a bit tired. You go ahead. Shuffle, shuffle, stop, turn around, shuffle, back. Daddy, yes, Jonathan, please go with me. Okay. So I crawled out of bed and we walked together. You see, Jonathan had never been this way before. That's the very thing that's going on within our text this morning in the book of Deuteronomy. Israel is also on the verge of a new journey. The nation had traveled from Egypt to a place called Kadesh Barnea from Sinai. And after 40 years in and around Kadesh Barnea, Israel traveled north on the king's highway, went around Edom through the plains of Moab. And now on the east bank of the Jordan River, gazing west into the promised land, the people knew, they knew that in all their travels, they had never been this way before. The hallway what, looked, what they looked at ahead of themselves looked like five miles long, a hallway five miles long, with multiple side rooms where giants were waiting to jump out and, and eat Israelites for late night snacks. And that's what the word of God says. In Numbers 13, it says, the land through which we have gone to spy it out is a land that devours its inhabitants and all the people that we saw in it are of great height. They were giants. There had been no circumcision or Passover for 40 years. Getting through the Jordan River presented a huge problem and then there was Jericho with its very high walls, was looming in the immediate future. Making matters worse, it's recorded in Numbers 13. The Amalekites dwell in the land of the Negeb. The Hittites, the Jebusites, and the Amorites dwell in the hill country. And the Canaanites dwell by the sea and along the Jordan. Before Israel stands a dark hallway. They had never been this way before. You know that same kind of sinking feeling, don't you? I do. Maybe you have been or are terrified at the thought of bringing a new child home or watching your last child leave home. For many of you, members of our congregation, you'd say, well, yeah, that was a very, very long time ago, but I remember it. Maybe you're facing a situation on the job that has your stomach tied up in square knots. Maybe it's a financial setback or a spouse where aged parents are succumbing to dementia and or Alzheimer's disease. Some of us are facing a future that is so painful and so private that it's only known to our God. And what about the pandemic? Has that been or is that not a very dark hallway? Darker for many others, to say the least. Whatever our hallway may be, we mutter under our breath, I've never been this way before. 
The temptation, because we are tempted, and Satan is always there just chomping at the bit to tempt us, to seek direction in ways that only bring death, that bring us despair. In like manner, like I said, he tells lies to us. And again, Jesus calls him the father of lies. He whispers in our ears, take no chances. Say no to courage and yes to caution. Expect the worst. Triple lock all of the doors. Protect yourself in a tight radius of won'ts, don'ts, can'ts, and quits. Think about every possible peril. Focus on the dangers and worry yourself with what if, what if. Come weal, come woe, make your status quo. Satan and the world offer only lies. Who will lead us? Who will lead us into the future? Well, Moses gave the answer already way back then. Moses promises, he says this, The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me. Because Moses was under divine judgment, he had disobeyed God, and so he wasn't allowed to set foot into the promised land. He promises another prophet like himself. The Lord knows. The Lord knows that long, dark hallways are not conquered by promising, I'll be with you in spirit. A mystical, abstract, vague presence does no good. Just ask any four-year-old. Dark hallways need a real person with a loving and authoritative voice. Someone in the flesh. Joshua was the, was the first of those prophets who was like Moses and spoke the Lord's words. Joshua was the one appointed by God to safely lead Israel to inherit the promised land. And there were other prophets like Moses too. Uh, it inc- they included Samuel and Elijah and Elisha. And these prophets... They were the Lord's voice leading Israel in her journey of faith. In contrast to other offices in the Old Testament, especially like judge or king or priest, the prophets were the right-hand men of God, and they spoke with authority, the final authority. So God's prophetic word endured forever, and it alone was and is all-powerful and able to lead Israel. The final fulfillment of the Lord's promise of a prophet like Moses is Jesus, who is greater than Moses. That's what God says in his word. Jesus not only speaks the truth, he is the truth. That's what he said of himself. I am the way, the truth, and the life. He not only speaks God's word, he is God's word. Become flesh. Jesus not only knew the Father face to face, he is the face of the Father. Moses longed to see the Lord's glory while Jesus is the glory of the Father. Moses led Israel to the brink of the promised land. Jesus completely finishes what he began. Some who heard Jesus did everything they could to to muzzle his voice and to silence his teaching. While their evil scheming and, and underhanded treachery failed, they finally employed and took advantage of Pilate and Judas. And remember what they used? They used whips and thorns, nails and spear. There, there they thought, we've got him. He'll never speak again. But three days later, something happened. The prophet spoke. Peace to you. Receive the Holy Spirit. All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. So unlike Joshua, Samuel, and other prophets, Jesus carried out all of God's promises, the Father's promises. When he rose from the dead, he put the yes 
and the amen behind all of what the Father said. Paul even says in 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 20, he says this, all the promises of God, all of them find their yes in him. That is, in Jesus. Alive on the third day, Jesus lives to lead us by his word. The giants of of sin and selfishness are, are slain by his word. That's what Paul says in Ephesians chapter 6, with the sword of the Spirit. In our gospel lesson, unclean spirits submit to him, to his teaching. The enemy called Lucifer and Satan and the devil must now bow to his word. Jesus leads us through the proclamation of the gospel, through our baptisms, through the water and word of holy baptism, and through the reception of the Eucharist, his true body and blood in the Lord's Supper. And we celebrate it and sing it liturgically. This is the feast of victory for our God. With confident hope, we await our final journey the resurrection of the body and the life of the world to come. Just as the Lord provided Moses as well as many other prophets to lead Israel, so does the Lord provide us with his final prophet, Jesus, whose death and resurrection empower us to march forward in faith. Because of Jesus' cleansing blood, because of his resurrection joy, and the power of the Pentecost, the miraculous coming of the Holy Spirit, many on the east bank of the Jordan River have dared to march straight ahead. Paul tells us why. 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14. But thanks be to God, But thanks be to God who in Christ always leads us in triumphal procession. So whatever your dark hallway may be, listen. God is calling. He says, go. You're never alone in that dark hallway. He guarantees that you will never, ever, ever go it alone. The Lord, your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among you, from your brothers. It is him to whom you should listen. Listen we must. Follow we will. In the name of Jesus, amen. We join together now in confessing our Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. We confess together, I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Let us pray for the church of God and for all people according to their needs. Gracious Lord, we give you thanks for the gift of the Holy Scriptures both law and gospel, in which we see our sin and see your love in our Savior. As Christ is true prophet and Savior of this world, 
Give us faith to continue to hear his voice and find comfort in his work of salvation. Bless the proclamation of the word and raise faithful servants who will share your commands and the forgiveness that comes through Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Ever-giving Lord, grant continued faith by your Holy Spirit through the hearing of your word that we be fed and nourished, produce in us good fruit for the sake of selves and others, that we may not cause others to stumble, but to walk firmly in your ways. Lord, in your mercy, hear our hear prayer. prayer. All-powerful Lord, at whose word and authority even unclean and evil spirits submit and obey, hinder the work of Satan in our lives, that your kingdom and victory be known to all. Give your peace and presence to those who suffer any affliction, especially Don and Carolyn Dittmar, Kathy Wilson, Etta and George Callow, Hope Grewey, Virginia Teensvold, John Lander, Stacy Hovland, Ike Darling, Pastor Fred Yago, Mira Schwab, and also Lori Nielsen, who is now in the hospital, and pray not only for her, but for all, for healing, that all get their strength back, for a peaceful and calm spirit. Help them all, dear Father, to be well taken care of. Enable us to be a blessing to those in their time of need. Lord, in your mercy, hear Amen. our prayer. Dear Father, we pray that you would be with our sister congreg congregation, St. Mark Lutheran Church on the other side of Santa Rosa as they call a new pastor today. We pray that you would lead them through your Holy Spirit and that the man that they call will accept their call and come and serve them well. Lord, in your mercy, hear Amen. our prayer. We continue to lift up before you the spouses and families of John Wyckoff, Ralph Schneider, Rick Kennedy, and Mary Ambrose, who died last week and are now with you forever in heaven. Comfort and strengthen them with your holy love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We continue to lift up before you our president, Congress, and all of our civil leaders, and pray that you would help them to know how to serve the best that they can. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, our prayer. prayer. And we also continue to pray for our ministry here at St. Luke, and especially for our preschool, that more and more parents will feel more comfortable in enrolling and sending their children to us, blessing us to be a blessing to them by sharing your love through Jesus. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. We now join together in praying the most excellent of all prayers, the prayer that our, our Lord has taught us. Our Father, our Father who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, come, thy will be done on earth as, as it is in heaven. In heaven. Give us, Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, you have safely brought us to the beginning of this day. Defend us in the same with your mighty power and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings, being ordered by your governance, may be righteous in your sight through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen.
Amen. We conclude our worship with the liturgy as found on page 228 of our hymnals with the Benedict Thomas. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. We sing our closing hymn, hymn number 718, Jesus Lead Thou On. resurrected and ascended Lord with gladness and remember he is coming back. Thanks be to God.
crazy. 